Hello all, in this lecture we will see about data models, schemas and instances. So these are some of the basic definitions that will be used throughout our subject. So this is a, a very important topic that is you have to uh, remember all these points. So one of the most important uh, characteristics of this uh, data based uh, DBMS system is data abstraction data abstraction so you have heard of, about this data abstraction in uh, C++ when you study this programming languages as like C++ Java etc so data abstraction is an important feature in database approach also so data abstraction means it refers to the suppression of details of data organization and structure storage so that is we will be hiding the details on how the data is stored in the secondary storage or how it is organized how it is stored internally all these details need to be abstracted or hidden from the user that is if you are using when you uh, search uh, for some item in a e-commerce site you don't know how it is stored or where it is stored how uh, what type of element it is like that if you are searching for mobile phone you won't be looking at the structure you all those details will be hidden to you so data those, that characteristic is important for database approach also. so uh, we will highlight only the essential features for an improved understanding of data so this is meant by data abstraction so different users can perceive data at their preferred level so that is another thing that is needed when we do this uh, data abstraction this is also achieved that is if there are different kinds of users they need different kinds of data the same data will have different views so those kind of things will also be provided when we have this data abstraction model okay so this data abstraction it is achieved by creating data models so we need to achieve this data box abstraction so in order to achieve the data abstraction we have some concepts uh, concepts known as data model so a data model it is actually a collection of concepts that can be used to describe the structure of the data so it is actually a collection of concepts so it is a co collection of concepts and it is used to describe the structure of the database and it also provides uh, the necessary means to achieve this data abstraction. So this is actually data model is created to create that abstraction. So we have already seen data abstraction. So in order to achieve that uh, data abstraction, we should have this data model. So by structure, we mean data types, the relationships, constraints that apply to the data type. So structure of the database means we have to specify the data types the relationship between these uh, data, data and also the constraints on that data. So we will learn about these constraints at all uh, later. And also it should also, uh, it is mainly to achieve this abstraction and it also includes some basic operations uh, like retrievals and updates in the database. If you want to retrieve any information or if you want to make update in the database or we need some operations. So data model will consist of structure as well as this basic operations. So basic operations like if you want to compute the CGPA of a student, if there is some data, we want to calculate the average CGPA or if you want to compute the CGPA of a student like that, there will be different actions that will be needed. So all these things are known as uh, database operations. So those uh, operations, basic operations to uh, retrieve some information or update the database, delete something, all these things should be there. Additionally, user-defined operations will be needed. So all those basic operations uh, should also be there in our data model. So data model, it's collection of concepts to describe the structure of the database and also uh, it should have some basic operations. So this data model is created to achieve this abstraction, the data abstraction feature. So we have uh, different uh, categories of data models. So there are many models that have been pro uh, proposed, but we have we will be characterizing this data model into three mainly. So we may 
we classify it into three categories. So first one is a high level or, or conceptual data model or we call it as semantic data model also. So it is conceptual data model, high level model or semantic uh, data model. So this is a high, uh, high level model. So this is actually it provides concepts that are closely to the way many users perceive it. So this is a high level model. It means that how users view this data. We need to model that thing. So if you have data, we want to model the data based on the user preference. So how users can view, uh, users view the data. We need to model based on, we may use some diagrams or we use some notations to represent that. So that model is known as conceptual model or high level data model. So this is how uh, users perceive this data. So mainly we have this entity relationship model, uh, entity relationship data model. Uh, it is actually uh, wrongly typed as a model. So it is ER model. So we have entity relationship model. So we will be learning about entity relationship model uh, in the next after two, three lectures, we will be learning more on entity relationship model. So what we do is when we start our database design, what we do is after getting the requirements from the customer, the what we do is we will draw the ER diagrams, entity relationship diagrams. So this represents the uh, represents how users view the data. Okay, we will get a, a understanding of how what all things that should be there in the database. So this is known as conceptual or high level data model. Okay. Then second type of data model, it is known as physical data model or low level data model. So this provides co uh, concepts that describe details of how data is stored in the computer. So we need to store the data in the secondary storage device or in the hard disk or in the computer. So we need some way to represent that data. So this is known as internal model or physical data model. So it can be uh, B tree, B plus tree, there are different or hashing technique, we are using different techniques, we will be storing the data elements in the secondary device. So we need to represent that uh, data, then it is known as physical data model. So we will be learning uh, something about this physical data model in fourth module, I think so. So we will be learning about B plus tree, B tree and all hashing, all these techniques we will be studying. So that is actually how data is represented inter internally. So it is it deals with record formats, record ordering, uh, orderings, then access paths, how to access an element, all these things will be uh, specified in this physical data model. Then we have a third model, it is known as implementational or representational data model. So this, uh, this will be in between these two extremes. So this is high level and this is low level. So in between these two models, we have this implementation or representational data model. Yeah, so it provides concepts that fall between the above two. So it is used by many commercial uh, DBMS uh, implementations. So it will be mainly used by many DBMS implementations. We have this model. So mainly we have this um, relational data model network model, hierarchical model, all these comes under this representational data model. So it stands in between these two models. So the thing is that we have, when we start designing, we have the raw data. We get this data from the users. So if we want to design a college automation software, we will discuss with the college authorities and they will say, I want to store the student name, phone number like that, this data is there. So what we start with this, we start with this data and we will model it and we will model and we will represent that data using this entity relationship model. So that is what we learn in entity relationship diagram. Then after that, what you have to do, we have to store it in the database. For that, we will be using some relational database or object oriented database or RDFMS like that. There are different databases available. So when we use such a database to represent that thing, we call it as implementational representational data model. 
then after that when we represent the data it should be stored in internally in the hard disk so it will be represented using this physical data model so we'll be learning all these things so in the first module we'll be learning about er model and in the second module we'll be learning uh, more on this relational data model and i think in the third module we'll be learning about this uh, physical data model. then uh, we have to see some more definitions uh, next is database schema and schema diagram what do you mean by this data base schema so this word will be used throughout our text so it is actually the description of a database is known as database schema so description of this database is known as database schema so it includes a description of the database structure data types and the constraints on the data so database schema it is actually a description and it contains the database structure how the structure is the data types for each data item and also the constraints that are specified on the data item then we have a schema diagram so schema diagram it is actually a illustrative display of a database schema that is if you rep represent it pictorically pictorically it is known as a schema diagram then we have schema construct this these are all some terms so it is a component of the uh, schema or an object within the schema example student course if you are representing a college database then we have, have a construct student so the student table will be there then it is known as a schema construct so schema means description then if it is represented diagrammatically we call it a schema diagram then construct means it is a component of the schema maybe student course faculty like that all these will be considered as schema constructs so this is an example for schema diagram as we have student so this is one schema construct this is course is another schema construct prerequisite like that there are different uh, schema constructs are there uh, these are some of the constructs and there will be so this is what i have told then this is actually the description of the database this can be considered as the schema also so this is actually the schema description of the database this means we have name student then we have to specify the data type also here the data type is not specified name should be character student number should be a 10 digit number like that there will be some uh, uh, some data types also then there will be some constraints we may specify that student number should be unique so that is known as uniqueness constraint so all this this will give the description of the database and it is known as schema diagram okay so these are known as schema constructs then another term we use is database state so database state is actual it is an actual data stored in a database at a particular moment in time so it is actually the current state of the database it is actually the current state if we store some data in the database and if we look at the tables then it is known as the uh, database state it's a collection of all data in the database so it is also called as database instance database occurrence or snapshots so all these terms will be used throughout so we'll be using database state so it means the data at a particular moment of time in time if we see the data if there is some if we call it as also call it as populated table so if some information is stored in the table we call it as populated table then uh, we have initial database state it is a initial database so initial what all things that are stored it is known as initial database state then we uh, we use a term known as valid state valid state means which are valid that a state that satisfies the structure and constraints of the state database so if you have specified the structure and constraints and if it satisfies then we say it is a valid state for example if you are asked to enter uh, some information onto your campus software you will be asked your name so you should not represent using digits or if you are asked to enter your phone number you should not uh, give some letters so that is a constraint so if you are uh, correctly inform uh, correctly entering all this information then we can say that it is a valid state that data will be stored and all the information will be a uh, valid state so this is an example for database state so this is the same example we have student we have two elements so this is at a particular moment in time 
this may not be the initial state it, it is after loading some of the elements we have this state so this is known as populated table this is a uh, database occurrence we call we use the reference so database instance snapshot so snapshot of a database so this is a data at a particular moment in time so this is known as database state then we will see the difference between database schema versus database state so this is actually so this is known as database schema so this is known as database schema and this is known as the, so the populated table is known as so the, if there is information in the schema it is known as database state if there is data that is stored then we call it as database state so the distinction between these two are database schema changes very infrequently so we won't be changing the schema always so if we want so if we are storing the these information that student uh, may student number uh, class major so if you want to add phone number to this so we have to add we have to change the schema because that schema definition it is not there in the table that column is not present so we need to change the scheme so that schema change won't happen always that happens only when there is uh, some updation is needed in the structure of the database so database schema changes very infrequently but database state changes every time the database is updated so whenever we change something so if you are updating uh, the phone number or if you are deleting a record if you want to delete a student if you want to add some uh, information of a student uh, so every time when we change make those changes that database state will be changing so database changes every time the database is updated and we use another term schema is also called as intention and uh, state is also called extension so schema is called intention and state is called extension so this is a reference uh, use 6th and 7th edition of this book thank you